so uh, just tried to do a, a ring count some of these are kind of tight in here but this old pine tree is uh, just a little bit older than I am I'm I, I'm guessing somewhere in the in the 50 mark uh, some of these others some of these rings around here are a little bit are pretty tight and they're kind of hard to keep track of but uh, about 50 years uh, give or take uh, three or four I would say in either direction probably a little bit on the higher side uh, as some of those rings are a little tighter a little harder to read but it's been a good been a good tree it was kind of in uh, the middle of the yard and was kind of a made it look like uh, some of the Pacific mountainous regions that you have out there some of those big tall pine trees with no branches you know way up at the top but really nothing going up and down it's kind of neat looking but it was also kind of in the way I wanted to get rid of it but I didn't have a good excuse and uh, we had some 50 mile an hour winds for uh, about a day and a half uh, big gusts and well it answered it and took care of it for me so I didn't have to okay so let's talk for a second about chainsaws um, this is a is a steel I don't know what the model number is I'm not really keen on all that stuff uh, says it right there though and this is a Remington now you're like Remington what in the world is that what are you doing I mean steel's the best in the market and blah 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 and I, I'm you know sure they're nice they're fine but I have to tell you this Remington is becoming quickly my workhorse now this one's a smaller one it's only got a 16 inch bar on it to steal and it's it's much lighter it's very easy to move around and I prefer that for doing things like limbing this tree which you uh, have seen or are about to see but this one definitely is a workhorse it really goes through the material a whole lot better it's got a much thicker gauge chain a much bigger chain a much bigger bar it's an 18 uh, and I don't really need anything bigger than that um, you know when I was trying to find a, a different saw I figured I needed a backup saw because this was my only one so I was looking around and obviously the first thing you do is you look at steel and you look at Husqvarna and you look at some of these and you go, well, is this the type of saw that I need? And I just didn't want to spend the money. I couldn't justify three, four hundred dollars for a saw. The primary purpose at the time was a backup saw to this because there wasn't a whole lot that I needed to do that this couldn't do it. It might take a little while to cut through an ash tree that's about this size but a pine tree they're the most of the ones that I have fallen anyway and they're not that bad and all the ash trees are dead other than that the trees on our farm just aren't that big so I figured I could probably get by with this but because we do live down a long dirt road and uh, a long road then if this happened to go down or it had a problem uh, like has it has had problems then I wouldn't be able to get out say a tree fell across the driveway and then I've got nothing uh, so I needed a backup saw so I looked online and started doing the reviews and I got this thing off of Amazon, got this Remington off of Amazon. I have an Amazon Visa card and I had a whole bunch of points uh, available because I use it all the time. And I, this ended up being, I think it was 111 or $117 uh, done, complete. It, was on, it came up on sale and I went ahead and bought it with points. So it ended up actually costing me nothing. So what a great deal for a backup saw. And it has been great. A lot of the reviews out there for this particular saw said that it was hard to start or uh, for the first time and all of these different types of things. I have actually found that this is easier to start than the steel. This steel has that, I don't know what the feature is called, but it's like a assisted start and easy start. It's actually kind of a pain uh, because you kind of pull it to a tension point and release and that's about it, it it's it's kind of wonky uh, for somebody who's real you know used to just grabbing it and ripping it uh, this is a little bit different because if you grab it and you rip it you, you mess all kinds of things up you can break the string and the little spool inside and it's kind of a pain but I had a trigger problem on this where the throttle and the trigger got stuck wide open obviously that's not a good thing uh, when you're going along so I had to get take this into the shop the good news was that was covered under warranty and this was at the local uh, farm store here that has a big steel section so that was a very good thing it didn't cost me anything other than about a week where I didn't have a saw this one uh, so far so good haven't had any issues with it uh, still cuts very very well I actually haven't done anything to the blade yet although I've only run about three tanks of fuel through it uh, in my cutting and you can see some of what it was doing there anytime the saw stops or skips or does something like that that's on me and I can see it's still new enough that I need to tighten the chain a little bit um, to keep it a little bit better 
but this saw I just have a it's so light I think it it, it tends to have greater user error for me and I don't keep it straight and still enough, whereas this kind of tends to pull itself through the wood very, very easily. Um, so all in all, they're both great saws. I love the size of this one, um, but if I had to go back and do it again, I don't, I'm not sure that I'd buy another steel just because of the money. And you know, you're looking at this saw was 300 and some dollars. Uh, I'll have all these details down in the description, but this brand new was uh, 300 and some dollars and this was just over a hundred. Now, granted, this was on sale, but even when, I mean, that that's incredible. And it makes you think, oh gosh, if I had to replace this thing, let's say that part wasn't under warranty uh, and the service that had to be done, I would have spent about half the way to this saw or more or all the way to this saw. Uh, so, you know, kind of up in the air on this. But overall, I'm very, very happy with the Remington. It's done everything I've asked it to do. It starts right away. And um, I'm not able to finish this tree today because I thought I had uh, some more fuel on hand for this one because it's different. This one takes a, uh, a 40 to 1. This one takes a 50 to 1. I thought I had some fuel on hand for this. I didn't. So uh, I'm out and I'm not going to ask this thing to finish this. Uh, plus it needs a little bit of uh, a little bit of blade sharpening. That's on that's on me. Uh, my fault for not doing that before I started. But I got most of this done as you can see uh, as I'll show you in a second. I got most of the tree done now it's just a big cleanup and the biggest thing is now I have access and I can get back from my shop which is back behind the camera over here to where we're working on the gardens and inside the house and all that and that's going to keep me from having to go around this or jump over it which I again have no problem doing that's kind of fun keeps me in shape anyway. So that's what we got going on with here is a little bit about chainsaws. Um, I do ha wear the chainsaw safety chaps pretty much all the time. Um, I don't always wear the helmet and the face shield. If I do anytime I'm cutting thin anything above my head uh, because I have you know just the nuisance of little branches and things coming and smacking me in the face and that's not real fun when you're uh, navigating in the woods. But I got all that safety stuff and kind of basically I told my wife, I like, look, if I have it, I'll use it. If I don't have it, obviously I can't use it. So I use the chaps uh, almost all the time unless I'm cutting like one branch off of one tree because it snapped or something like that I won't pull out the whole thing but just because it's a little bit safe uh, for safety I do also wear steel toe boots uh, because these big logs can hurt and I've had that happen before where I've just <laughs> I've not worn it and I really wished I had having you know no serious injuries just you know big ouchies and the next thing is considering shin guards because man I got whacked in the shin plenty of times um, that doesn't feel real good so you can see most this pretty big tree, uh, probably about 60 feet, and I've probably got about 40 feet of it uh, delimbed and run and logged out. So now the hard work begins. Here are the logs. That's where I split and stack my wood, one of those little stacks over there. So I don't have too far to go with this stuff, and it is downhill a little bit. But you know, one bad part about all this is. Um, I got sap all over my hands. I tried really hard not to, uh, not to get too sappy, but at the same time, uh, I didn't want to take my my good like fencing gloves and get them all sappy. And I just hate wearing cotton gloves, and I just don't own any of those. I, I don't like them. I'd rather use my bare hands if I can, and uh, unless it's just really really cold. But ah, yeah, I'm sticky and <laughs> dry pot sticky, and all kinds of things are sticky. So. Uh, it's not too, too bad, but nonetheless, it's there. And I'm probably sticky in spots I haven't discovered yet. So, um, yeah, you know, that's a pine tree for you. Yeah, I forgot to mention that this, that the Remington chainsaw came with a case. And for that, I am extremely appreciative. That's obviously if you buy the, the other orange one the steel, you're going to pay a lot more for just a case. And this actually came with it. I didn't know that that was the case. It didn't, it didn't say it, uh, or it didn't say it very clearly on the Amazon website when I bought it, but that was definitely a plus when, uh, it came in its own case. So now I can just take this, I store it inside my shop with the other one right on top of it. So works out pretty nicely, but very happy for the case also makes it a real nice thing if I ever have to uh, take it out when the tractor I can just throw the whole case in the bucket of the tractor and not worried about it bouncing around or in the back of the truck and uh, knowing that it's not going to get hurt big plus for the Remington
Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. This new crazy mother. Now you may have seen me as I go through using the um, using the chainsaw and kind of marking, you know, the spot where I need to cut. And I've tried eyeballing it before, but it just never really worked out for me. I always mess it up by a little bit. And then when I go to stack it, it comes out in all these different varying lengths. So I had this old broomstick or mop handle, I don't know what it was, but I went and measured the actual inside of my uh, wood stove. So this is the depth. This is the size that I want. Just stuck it in there, mark the spot, cut it off. I have two of these. I keep one of them out near my splitting stack and I take one of them with me uh, anytime I'm cutting uh, trees or limbing trees just to kind of keep this by my side so I know that the wood that I cut if it's shorter than this I'm in good shape if it's longer than this I got a bit of a problem and I try to cut it in and around the knots so sometimes I get a little bit of an odd piece that's also something I've learned the hard way is that just because it says 18 don't try and cut through the knot number one I never really tried to do that but I would try to make the piece a little bit longer or a little bit shorter and that just messes everything up you're better off in my opinion cutting that hunk out where the knots are, where the branches are, cutting that off and tossing it to the side and burying it somewhere else, maybe in a fire pit outside or something like that, and get the better, straighter pieces of wood. They just stack better, it's easier to carry, it's easier to handle, it's just easier to deal with all the way around. But this is important. The silly part about this is, um, this has become part of a highway, uh, apparently, for the kids. So let me show you what that is. They have taken sticks from all over that we've used and have built what they call a little highway. They're having fun. They're outside. They're using their imagination. That's a good thing. Nah, that's a great thing.